Hennifer drives and he's got Hennifer's come alive tonight. We saw him in the tournament. He really didn't do that much offensively. Tonight he's going to the hoop. Eight points for Hennifer. He came along, I think, uh, as the season progressed last year in the scoring column. Maybe he'll do the same thing this year. Adelphia Communications, clear TV8, game of the week. Bombs over South and Southern, and Carney makes the basket for the home team Indians. 38-33, South leading. Well, I think Otis likes to come out of a forward better than a guard position, even though he's not that big. Tuttle tried to reverse layup. Now Indians that, thought they had the block. That may be Carney's fourth. No, let's Tom see who they're Romeo, maybe. No, that's Carney. It Ten. is Carney. No, it's not. I thought let's it was Steve Romeo. Here. Let's see. I haven't put anybody up there yet. Have they they put Otis up. No. They've got him down for three, Art. It is Otis. Number 10. I, I Okay. I got him down for four. So do I. Okay. Uh, Tuttle is on the line. The sophomore for Southern. One and one. He'll get another one. He's a fine shooter. I like this kid. He's got ice in his veins. He really shoots the ball well. Yo, Carney's jumping ability does make him very <laughs> dangerous coming in <laughs> off a of forward off the corner there. <laughs> Two free throws for Tuttle. I don't know what we list Carney at height-wise, but he can spring. He plays like a 6'4 forward. He's excellent. High school 6'4 forward. Forrester on the point. Carney on the wing. I always said coming into this gym that this is the end that South loves to shoot on. That, ba that basket sort of bounces a little bit. Freiburg missed the shot. Ziemba rebounds. Three-point lead. Indians maintaining it through the most of this third quarter. Three-point lead. Well, Southern's got their hands full, Ken, because you got your best player on the bench. He's got four fouls. Coach Runke's not going to use him until probably halfway through the fourth quarter. So Southern's got a big job out there. Ziemba tried to go to the postman, Dolan, and it was batted away by the Indians. And do here comes Carney. Fast break. Blocking foul. Rams won the charge. They didn't get it. Ziemba gets the block. Well, he just was a little slow getting back on. Greg Albano, by the way, is taking advantage of Jim Bailey being on the bench because of fouls because he's playing his own defense now, too. You know, it's interesting, Art. Collapsing Every, in underneath. Yeah, they're, they're, they're both matching up just about the same way, and you, see, you think you have to charge on Carney, but he's so quick he steps around you. Carney gets two shots. This is the first one. Carney is what, two for four in a free throw line, uh, Art? Now he's two for five. Two for five. He's going to make it either two for six or three. Yep, two for six. Romeo! Boy, he's tough, he Ken. is fouled. He is instant offense. Basket is good. He and gives that ball club a lift. I believe Hennifer got the foul. He's one of those, what you call a gym rat down here. He's always up with Skyview. I have uh, Hennifer down for <laughs> four. The scoreboard says two, so our, our stats are a little bit... A, no, they have four now for him. You're right, though. This Romeo, since he has come into the game, has really changed South's uh, entire offensive attack around. Right, now, what's Jim Runke saying, guys? He's questioning something. He wants to know how many fouls that they, they're checking the book and they're checking the clock, I think, Art, to see if the, the fouls match up. Both Runke and Albano over at the scores table. Trying to get straight. Jim Runke uh, still, okay, now he's satisfied. He sits down. No, he doesn't. Walks, gonna get a substitute in. We're gonna get a new man we haven't seen before. The Southern Regional. Number 15 coming into the ball game for the Rams. Joe, Joe Pessy. Pessy, 5'11", senior. First time we've seen Joe. I don't think he played in the uh, WWM Classic. Yeah, he's. this is the first time we've seen him because that game was so close. At the end, uh, South made a run at Southern that night. And this kid here, of course, will be another one of uh, Coach Runke's seniors. He's got about four or five this year that uh, this club's been together a couple of years. He replaced the uh, Hennifer. Maldi shoots. No. Forrester with a rebound. Indians by six. They can make it eight with a basket. The Indians love to run. Boy, they like to get out on that, them wings and go. Kick. That'll be Tom's over south ball. Maldi kicked the ball. 
We have 319 left to go in the third quarter. 41-35 Indians. I think the only guy that Southern don't match up on is Romeo. Freiburg drives a baseline. Can't do it. Hesse brings it down. They're trying to go inside on Southern off that base, and that's pretty tough because good defensive teams will get some help over there. Hesse misses. And Carney is fouled. He's hammered by Hesse. And Otis will get to go to the free throw line here. You know, he does get up in the air. I know Art's been telling our viewers about that, but can I? He uh, he's big vertical jump. Must be in the 35s or something. Another substitution for Tom's River South this time. Into the ball game comes Tommy Sotaris back into the ball game, number 52. And let's see, I believe Freiburg sat down. So it's Carney on the line. He's playing with Sotaris, Romeo, Benta Vegna, and Forrester. Big lineup for the Indians. Carney missed the free throw. That big lineup is helping in there. Carney's missed five in a row, Art. In the free yeah. Throw line. yeah. Carney has the ball. Takes the jumper from the foul line. Won't go. And another foul. That was Mr. Romeo trying to get in on the offensive boards. Well, Romeo picks up his second. And it's a six-point Indian lead, and looks like Tuttle is going to shoot for Southern Regional. First period, they, they sunk all four tries. And since then, they've had some trouble from the free throw line. So Coach Albano was concerned. I guess he still is because they're, not, <laughs> they're finding, not finding the mark. But they sure are scoring from the field, that's for sure. Tuttle's hit three in a row from the free throw line. Well, in big ball games like this, Art, you know you have to make those foul shots. It's such a close game, right? Two. Because if South had been making those free throws, I think they'd have a much larger lead. Oh. Just take a look at it. They might be up by 10 or 15 points at this point in the game. But they're up four. Romeo's open. He hits. He loves that spot. This is He's a real, he's what we call a gym rat in the old days. Him and his buddies always up Skyview. They, they play a lot of basketball. I got him down for 12. 43-37, nearing the two-minute mark. Foul! Benta Vegna out of control as he went up in the air. And Ziemba was hammered when Benta Vegna that came down. That was hammered. No, that's hammered. I think Larry Ziemba thought he's back out in the football <laughs> field on that one. Those two went at it in football. Ziemba and Benta Vegna, and now they're going at it in basketball. Ziemba goes the line for two. South went the trap out of their press, and uh, Maldi saw right underneath the basket. Ziemba gave him a nice pass. So Ziemba, Ziemba enters a scoring column for Southern. Southern continues to be hot from the free throw line, just the opposite for some reason. Southern loves to shoot fouls. That one. one of two for Ziemba. In the tournament, they made all their fouls down the stretch. That's what won the ball game. Romeo. In and out. Here comes Maldi. Pessi. Fast break layup by Joe Pessi. 43-40. So Southern cuts the lead in half. It was six. It's now three for Tom's River South. They're doing a nice job with Jim Bailey on the bench. And they're still in the defensive zone. Or a zone defense, I At should two, say. Three. You're right, Art. And Romeo continues to shoot from the left of the foul line. And he hits. He's a tough shot. He really gives South that lift that they need offensively tonight. So it's a five-point Indian lead. It'll be Southern Regional ball. Good hustle by Sataris for the Indians. It's interesting that uh, I really thought that Southern would fall much farther behind with Bailey on the bench. These kids are doing a nice job. Ken Turp, Nick Workman, Art Chris bring you the action along with our crew. Lisa White, John Cappuccino, Lisa Cuss, and Jeff Simons behind the scenes for clear eight here in Tom's oh. River. Steal by Forrester. Nice soft 
What did I tell you about that one basket? That basket down here, it's like the hanger. And you know, the two tip players that came off the bench there, Romeo and Forster, have really been hot for South. They've really uh, keyed their big comeback. Tuttle misses. Forrester following in the footsteps of the great athletes in his family, his brother Tommy, all state first team in baseball, all sure quarterback in football, now playing for the Chicago White Sox organization. First baseman of Birmingham in a double A. Well, his sister was quite a soccer player, field hockey, yeah. right? She was great in three sports. Chris, was it? Chris. Chris Forrester. Uh, this little guy here, Doug, he's a very good baseball player. I've seen him play for Coach Frank yep. at South against East. And, uh, Doug started as a sophomore, third base for Tom's River South last spring. Well, between Romeo and Forrester coming off the bench, the first action they saw was in the second period. They've got a combined total of 23 points. Wow. That's big time. They've really South. sparked the Indians. Now they try to... Pass it back out to Dolan, and Carney stole it. Carney with a layup. That's the end of the third quarter as Otis Carney beat the buzzer, and it pushes Toms River South into a nine-point lead at the end of three, 49 of 40 in favor of the Indians. Well, of course, the exchange of uh, blows between Terry and, and Bailey really hurt Southern because Bailey's on the bench, and so, uh, South has a chance to make their run. Art. Okay, as far as the scoring goes, we have to look at Romeo for South and Forrester for South. Uh, Romeo came up with uh, eight points in the third period there, and Forrester came up with four points. As I said, they have a combined 23 points. For the Rams, Brian Tuttle had uh, four points on four converted uh, free throws. Hennifer had five points. We'll be back with a final quarter in a moment. There you see the shot of center court here at Times River High School South as we get ready to start the final quarter of the game of the week here on Clear 8 between the Indians of Times River South and White, the home team, and the visiting Rams of Southern Regional. Rams beating the Indians last week for the championship of the WOBM Classic, trying to beat them here in Class A South play. Well, Bailey's back in, and so is Hennifer. So they got their starting five so out there. So it's starters for Southern Regional. Hennifer Tuttle, Dolan, Bailey, and Malvey. Times River South has their starters back in. Well, they have three of them in there. Foul. They still have Forrester, and they still have Romeo, who come in off the bench. And they have Corny, Sataris, and Benta Vegna, who started the ball game. Art. Well, Benta Vegna just committed the foul. That's his third of the game, and it's a two-shot uh, foul. So Ron Hennifer, number 40 of the Rams, stands on the foul line. Shooting two. Missed it. I have him, let's see, one, two, two for five, Art. Is that correct from the free throw line? Six. Two for six. Two for seven. I'm sorry. Two for six now. Two for yep. six, right. Okay. 49-40. Well, Here's an interesting thing, Ken. It's going to be what will Bailey be able to do with his four fouls? Is he going to play fluid or is he going to hold back? Romeo missed. Bailey rebounds quickly down to Hennifer. They throw it away. A little too far ahead of Hennifer on the pass. Nine-point lead for South. Final quarter. Wow, what a pair of hands. He had to be an end. Forrester, driving layup, good. I told you guys about that one basket that sort of like hangs here in the South Gym. And they can shoot that hoop. So times over South, that biggest lead, right, Nick? 11 yep. points, 51 to 40. Just like Southern did last week. They kind of they had their lead at the 12-point lead in the third quarter. The third and, quarter. Was, and they made fouls down the end, though. You know, this could be something if... Uh, South can hold this lead, they're going to have to make their fouls. Southern calls timeout with 6.49 left in the third in the final quarter with a score. Toms over South 51 and Southern 40. Right. Well, I can't say enough about the two reserves that came in, uh, and that's Steve Romeo and Doug Forrester. Uh, the fact that they have scored so many points, you know, now it's like a combined 25 points, So, and we're just beginning the fourth period. And don't forget, the two of them sat out the entire first period, as far as I can remember. And I think we should reflect a minute maybe on Otis Carney as you watch Tons of South's uh, cheerleading squad. Uh, Otis Carney, uh, we talked about his jumping ability, his shooting ability, and of course as we look at the score now, we know he is the ninth leading 
coming in tonight's game, he's the ninth leading scorer in the Shore area, has 21 points per game. He's a little bit under that right now. He's got eight for the night. But he means so much to this Tons River South team. And uh, he's an all-around athlete. I mean, when you can be all-state defensive back, and from what I understand, I didn't see South play too many football games, that he didn't even play offense. He just played defense. And he was such a superb and superior uh, defensive football player. And I'm sure he'll do well on the college level, but he's just as good on the basketball court, it seems. And, you know, when you average 20 points a game, you got to be doing something right. He's tough, Art. Here we he's go. Art Otis athlete. has the ball, and he missed the shot. Penta Vagna. Foul. Penta Vagna should get two. I think that was on Dolan. Let's see what the uh, number comes up. Larry Ziemba back in for Dolan. It was on Dolan. They well, get him out of there. Bill's uh, second free uh, uh, personal foul of the night. Penta Vagna getting two shots for the Indians. This kid really goes to the boards. He's the he's the heart and soul of that defense down low for South. He transferred in last year from North Jersey, didn't he? Yeah. yeah he, he played like some of the basketball season last year, but I mean he was more of an outside player last year. Now he's all over all over the boards. Makes two. Indians lead by 13. So Southern right now in trouble. They've got to get something going here pretty quickly. 636 left in the game. Can't be as deliberate as they're used to being right now. They've got to start shooting a little sooner. Well, I think the whole key is how soon they loosen up Bailey. Steele, bent to Vegna, batted it away. Carney, he's got it. The Indians starting to pull away. 15-point lead. Just the opposite of last week's game. Unbelievable, isn't it? Well, the other day, yeah, a week ago, of course, this was all Southern. Tuttle. Making these shots. Now Ziemba it's all. missed. Two misses underneath. It's all South. And Romeo clears, and the Indians really in control now. If the Indians can hang on, it doesn't, it doesn't look like they're hanging on. It looks like they're increasing their lead. They're going to be in a very good position as Mouthy create. Uh, Commits the foul there. Mouthy going for a steal off Forrester. He couldn't do it. They're going to be in an ideal position in Class A South because they have beaten North, which was one of the which is one of the real powers in, in Class A South, and now they will have beaten Southern Regional, the other the Lakewood. defending champion. And they open and they beat Lakewood. Now the North game was not uh, a league tilt. That was in the tournament, but they play Tonsonville North later this week. Interesting. So, Interesting. Forrester misses the shot. South can win tonight and then also beat North later this week. They're in, uh, good, they're in good position. I think Art's going to be a wide open race this year. Nice play. Beautiful pass by Carney to Sataris who had position in the lane and Sataris put it in. Well, you talked about Tommy Sataris before, Ken, about what he does for a team. Well, right then and there, they left him open and he dropped the shot. Now look at that pass by Bailey. He was double teamed. I don't know how he even saw the man underneath. That, that just That's what he did in the tournament. Was that uh, Hennifer? That, that was, was Hennifer, Hennifer that made the bucket what a pass. on an assist by Bailey. Amazing. When you make a play like that, that there's big time. That was the best pass, I think, all night. That was, uh, I mean, especially being double teamed in this gym. This is a small gym. You're looking at OCC. That's a big core. You can see more things. That's the fifth personal foul against Ron Hennifer, I so believe, number done. 40. So he's done for the night. Jim Runke now will put a substitute in and take his place. It looks like Bill Dolan will be coming back into the lineup. So the first player to foul out of the ball game with 5.08 to go is Hennifer. Doug Forrester will go to the line when they come back as Jim Runke wants to talk it over. 5.08 left in the game, 57-42 Indians. This would be a disappointing loss for Southern in that uh, I mentioned I was talking to uh, their freshman coach, Dick Manzo, this afternoon, and uh, four years ago, the, he had an undefeated freshman team, 24-0, and four of the players out here, the seniors playing for Southern, were members of that, that team, which are Bailey, Bill, Dolan, Mouthy, and Hennifer. Let's that, also mention, while we have a chance here, Glenn Gorney is the other assistant for Southern Regional. Glenn took over that one year. Uh, Jim Runke took a year's leave of absence, did the color with me on Channel 8. Uh, Glenn had an excellent year for Southern Region. He kept the winning tradition going. And he's standing up right next to Runke over there in the huddle. There you see Tom's over South Huddle. And Albano's two assistants, Jim Cristiano, who also, I believe, uh, coaches other sports here at South. He coaches girls baseball. He has, does a lot of things. Christiano. And Charlie Frazier has been here many, many years. Big Charlie. Loyal well, assistant. I'll tell you, the three of them have certainly built a fine basketball program here at Tom's River South. 
uh, over the since Greg Albano has been here, Tons River South has been perennial winners. They they win year in year out. Consistently have good uh, uh, ball players who are well drilled, and they have another good team this year. Did you know that Albano was the original backboard shatterer before? Uh, <laughs> really, Dawkins what, made it popular with the Nets. Do? He shattered a basket when he was really? in, high, in, uh, in, in college, high school. In high school, he I went to dunk and he shattered it. He said he hit it just right, and that was before. The pros start shattering the basket. Well, I know he went to Irvington. The backboards. He Forrester makes the first one. Irvington High School up in North Jersey. Forrester makes two. 59-42. I was reading that when he was coach of the month in the Observer, that he had shattered a backboard in high school. Well, I, I think for our viewers here, uh, South is playing a good ball game, but I think that gentleman there is curtailed with the four fouls. Jimmy Bailey, if he's loose out there, you see that Southern offense running. Tuttle short. Sataris goes for the rebound. And it's going to be Southern ball. South ball. I'm sorry, South ball, and it's 59-42. It's a different type of ball player when you have one or two fouls and when you have four. This is a funny game. As you get closer to that fifth foul, you start tightening up. Greg had a brother. Greg Albano had a brother that played at Ryder College. Yeah, he was uh, Nikki's freshman coach at East. Real good player. Glenn Albano. Glenn Albano. He led Ryder uh, in scoring, yep. I think, Clear. on a varsity level for two years. Carney pumps one in from way out. He was a freshman coach at East for like three or four years. Jim Rucky played at Trenton State. Got a Trenton flavor with <laughs> Albano's brother at Ryder. There's a shot by Malvi. Mark Chris played at Ryder. We got the Trenton. You played at Trenton Catholic. This is a, of course, this is a, a Trenton area. I night. went to Ryder. You went to Ryder. <laughs> Here's Basketball. Forrester. That's why we're so strong academically. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean that seriously. It's a difficult school. 61-44. <laughs> Bailey draws a foul. The basket counts. I missed one on my score sheet before that, guys. If anybody remembers who made the basket before. The basket before was Malvi. Southern. Southern. Yeah, Malvi yeah, uh, threw Southern. one in from outside. Bailey gets one, and Malvi gets a basket. And Bailey goes to the free throw line. Art, the foul was I'm, on. I'm looking to see. It was number hard 14. to detect. He got one the 14. Art. 14, 14. Number 14. That's Forrester. That's his first. Bailey makes a three-point play. It may be a little too late. It's 61-47, 3.48 to go. Carney drives. Lays it in. It's going to count. And a foul on Dolan. Well, you know... Carney has got an explosive move to the basket, Ken. And, uh, to get him on a charge, you've got to be waiting way back. 63 to 47. Now the Indians will go down to Southern later in the year, and that's going to uh, be interesting. That'll be interesting. That'll be interesting. So each team with a victory. Indians hold on here. Carney with a three-point play. The thing with a league like this, you cherish your victories only a couple days because you're right back into the wars. Friday night, they'll all be back in a South competition. Bowen. Out of bounds. South ball, I believe. No, let's see what they're going to do here. It's going to be Southern ball. Malvi will inbound. The main thing what they're doing with Bailey now is, of course, he's more or less setting up the offense. And when he's usually, usually he's a firepower player. Bailey pops. Short. Sataris misses the rebound. Forrester grabs it. I tell you, this is really interesting. When you see that ball on the floor here, everybody gets on the floor for it. Carney jumper. He's got it. Carney really piling him up. Art. Yeah, he's, he's got quarter. nine points here in the fourth quarter. Four field goals, one free throw. He's and he Carney like he's steals. Steal. Quick see hands. how quick he got that ball in. Quick Carney hands. layup. He oh. beats two men. Oh, that was tough, He beat man. Bailey and he T beat Malley. Tough shot right through. Carney ball putting ball. on a show. A double team. Under three minutes to go. 68-47. Dolan draws a foul. Dolan will get two. Freiburg in for Tom's River South. And coming out will be Tommy Sataris. And Dolan looking on the free throw line for the two shots. Anthony Terry reporting back in for the Indians. Here you see Albano, the head coach of the Indians, talking to one of his players on the bench. You know, it might have something to do with that sweater, the way you always talk about Albano. He's first time we've seen it on this year. It's the best we've seen the Indians play. 
Well, the first shot goes in for Dolan. It was a big exchange, though, for our viewers. Uh, we have a lot of Southern uh, rooters here, a lot of South rooters, but that exchange between Terry and Bailey really hurt Southern when Jimmy had to go to bench. What do two, you think of that, Art? Two free throws by Dolan. It does. However, I wouldn't want to take away the overall floor game that Tons River South has played tonight because I'm not so sure, even with Bailey in the lineup, if with Romeo hitting the way he has, Forrester taking control of the point guard position the way he has coming off the bench, and also you throw in Bentevania and uh, Carney, uh, they're played a tough game tonight. I think Tons River South has played very good. Bailey short again. See, that's, that's off not of the shooting. Bailey. Usually when we come into this gym, everything is one or two points. Bailey hit that shot, and it's 68 to 51. We have 2.15 to go in the game. Carney. Look at this. All the steals. Huh. Substitution, Pessy. Joe Pessy back in for Southern, and Tuttle goes out. The tough thing here for Coach Rungy is going to be in that A-South now, as Art and Ken were mentioning before, you're down two in A-South this year. But I think there's going to be a lot of losses in A-South. Freiburg couldn't control, traveling. 17-point Indian lead. I didn't expect this tonight, Nick. Well, the thing of it is, Ken, you know you come into the Indian house, anything can happen. If they took Lakewood in the opener, they can beat anybody here. Well, it's a big week for, for the Rams also because losing here tonight, they are going to have to go up against a very good Lakewood team in their next game. They got and Lakewood the, next? And Lakewood is in the A-South too now. Wow. That's, Bill, a, that's a big order. Bill Dolan made that last shot. And here's Bent the Vagna answering back on a pass from Terry. All four Class A South leaders, I would say, are all in the top ten, too, in the Asbury Park press poll. Dolan is fouled by Bent the Vagna. That's his fourth. Two shots for Bill Dolan. No relation to Jim Dolan. The Dolan, the Dolan clan. Monsignor Donovan. Donovan. I should say St. Joe's when he played Notre Dame. He's he had back a brother, in the area, you know. Huh? He's back in the area. Uh, we were working out over OCC the other yeah, night. Yeah, Jimmy's around. He got cut by the Nets. He was a fifth-round draft choice out of Notre Dame. Dolan makes the first one. Had lots of Dolans for Southern yeah, and lots Southern. of Dolans for St. <laughs> Joe's Monsignor Mon Donovan. There's another Dolan coming up too, I believe, in the Southern chain. Is there? Around the eighth grade. And Jimmy's Southern. brother just graduated last year, Frankie Dolan from Monsignor Donovan. Sixth grade, I think it is. So these Dolans in Ocean County are really great basketball players. Carney. Carney's just going He's bananas here in the, in the second half. 13 points in the uh, fourth quarter for 13 Carney. in the fourth. Bailey misses, bent the Vagna. Nice quarter. Clears. Terry. Fouled from behind when he went around Mouthy. Mouthy reached over. That's Mouthy's fourth foul this evening. We have a new man for Southern Regional first action tonight. Number 42, Dave Mooring, a 5'11 junior. And he gives Bailey the rest of the night off. One minute to go. Jim Runke getting some of the younger players in here as he sends in Ford Dolan, who takes the rest of the night off. Coming That's in is uh, Mark, Hamersky. Mark Hamersky, six foot junior, number 24. On the line is Anthony Terry. Did you mention this before, Ken? I don't know, Dwayne King is here tonight? Dwayne King we saw tonight in a warm-up suit. Former Indian great. Danny in Mack. Football Danny and McCarris. basketball. Well, Danny McCarris has been at recent games, he's home. Terry got what, one of two, Art? One of two. Yeah, Dwayne is from Arizona State. Dwayne King, a Channel 8 Football Player of the Year, and he was a, what, four-year starter in basketball, wasn't four he? Four-year starter in basketball. And football. And football, all-star three or four times in both sports. And he's wearing a big sweatsuit from Arizona State that says Rose Bowl. He's proud <laughs> of that. Maybe we can grab Dwayne at the end of the game here. Foul was on Mike Womack of Tons River South. On the line is uh, Pessy. 51 seconds to go. Yeah, Arizona State, the Rose Bowl champions. Pack 8 champions in football and beat Michigan in the Rose Bowl. Pessy misses the shot. Anthony Terry with the ball. There's one thing that South has. They've got excellent hands as a basketball team. Speed, too. Speed. At the guard position. You're right, Art. Womack misses. 
Hesse to Mouthy. Mouthy lays it in. Mouthy had a brother that was quite a football player for Southern. Played uh, on the, uh, trying to think of the gang that he played with. Here's Carney coming back again. We Ma call that all net. Mouthy played on the great John Seddon team for Ronnie Emmert, brother of Chris Mouthy. He was a good running back. Here's a foul by Freiberg who went flying on the floor. <laughs> so two more too substitutions much. for Southern Regional. Number 30 comes into the ball game. That's Sean Nolan of 6'1 Junior. On the free throw line for the Rams is number 44 Paige Connor. 6'5 sophomore. A lot of junior varsity players getting in, Nick. Yeah, well, Coach runge has got to get some experience in there now because he's going to graduate five seniors this year. And uh, Terry misses. I just wanted to mention Rick Pacana was in for Toms River South at the buzzer there. And the final score, Toms River South 75, Southern Regional 55, Nick? 56. 56. 56. Can't read that number there. We still picking MVPs? Yep. It was it, Nick? I don't oh. think there's any doubt about Otis. it. Is there? Otis. Big O. The Big Mark. O. All right, it's unanimous. Our player of the game will be Otis Corny. Hello, Dwayne. Hey, Dwayne. Stick around a minute while I want to talk to you, okay? Uh, Art's going to give you the summary here before we break, and then we'll talk to Otis. So, Nick, you want to? Just summarize quickly. Well, that fourth quarter, Ken, it just was a blitz by South. And uh, really, you got a player like Bailey on the bench all through the third that, that hurt Southern's offense. But as Art was saying, you can't take anything away from South tonight. They just played an excellent game. They ran their break, and Otis was fantastic. Okay, you go get Otis. Art, you want to quickly run down that scoring? You ready? Okay. Here's the individual scoring. Here's the way the scoring went this evening. Tons River South coming up with a big victory, and indeed it was a big one, a 75-56 to 56, uh, uh, win over Southern Regional in a key Class A South game, even though it's only the second one of the season for both teams, because what it does is it makes Tons River South 2-0 in the divisional play, and it drops Southern Regional, the defending champion, to 0-2. Let's take a look at the individual stats here for the Southern Regional. Jim Bailey was the top scorer, although he sat out for almost the entire third period in parts of the fourth period. Uh, he ended up the game with 16 points. Other scores for Southern in double figures were Chris Mouthy with 10 points or Ron Hennifer with 10 points. Bill Dolan had nine points. Brian Tuttle, eight points. Joe Pesci had two with one field goal. And Larry Ziamba converted one free throw for one point. For Tons River South. Uh, the top scorer was our player of the game, Otis Carney, who came on real strong with 13 big points in the fourth period when South increased their lead to over 20 points at one time. He finished the game with 23 points. In double figures also for South, with 14 points were Steve Romeo coming in off the bench, 13 points Doug Forrester coming off the bench and playing a fine floor game. Tony Bentevena, who did a fine job in the rebounding department, came up with 13 points. So you've had four players from Tons River South in double figures in their big win this evening. Five points for Anthony Terry, who was a sure-handed guard, played good defense throughout the night. Four points for Eric Freiberg, and three points for, for Tom Sataris. And that's it as far as the individual stats are concerned. The final once more, Tons River South 75, Southern Regional 56. Tonight, you really put the old South Transition basketball, the good fast break, hit the boards, get the quick out, back into practice, and it's got to be a sweet win if they're coming off that OBM tournament. Oh, it was a good win. It was a good win. First of all, you know, when you're on your home court in the Class A South, you know, you have to do well there. Uh, plus, you know, losing to them last week wasn't a very good failing, and to lose back-to-back -back would even be worse. And we felt we had to come out, we had to get the score up out of the 50s, and we thought if we did, we'd have a real good chance to win. You know, our, you know, giving them 54 in a tournament, we felt wasn't bad defensively, but our offense, we had to get out of the 40s. I like the way today that your guards took the ball off the boards, went down, little Forrester come in and really started setting up your offense for you today. Well, that's what uh, Doug does for us. Unfortunately, in the tournament, this, in the championship game, he didn't have a real good game, but he gives us a whole other dimension when he comes off the bench. We bring Doug in, 
and even with Otis and Anthony or sometimes in place of Anthony, we got a little more set up offense and we can really execute or try to execute a little better than we did last week. The other guy off the bench that really helped you was Romeo. I think Art mentioned that between the two of those guys at one point going into the third and fourth quarter they had 20 points or 23 points in the ball game. Well, we felt at the beginning of the season that our bench uh, would come along. You know, unfortunately, uh, in the tournament they didn't. Today, I thought they did. I thought Steve gave us a real nice job off the bench, as did Doug. And I think we have some other guys who eventually, hopefully, will come along from that bench. Question to ask you: What do you think of the A South race now? You're two up on it. Southern's down two. You got Lakewood down one. You think a, there's going to be a lot of losses in A South this year? I think so. I, I think it's crazy, and the way the schedule runs. Uh, us, Southern, North, and Lakewood are all playing each other in the first three conference games. Now, I guess North and Lakewood this, tonight, and then Friday we, we all switch around and play each other. So by Friday we'll have a, I don't think it's a make or break week for anybody, but it'll be an indication of where we're headed. One question from Ken is, you wore the sweater today. <laughs> yeah, well, I've been on and off with that. You know, we, we beat Lakewood without it, and then we lost without it, so I had to, had to try something new. Well, have to shake it up a little. <laughs> Great win, Okay, Greg. thanks, Nick. And here we are, of course, with the Defensive Player of the Year, our most valuable player of the ball game, Otis Carney. And tonight you had your rhythm in the fourth quarter. You had 13 points. You were running the break well. Are you starting to get your basketball timing back? Well, yes. I. I it's hard coming from football straight to basketball. I didn't have no chance to rest. It was like, a, like either do it or you're going to lose. So I had to do it. Well, the first week you opened up with Lakewood. Then you went right to the Christmas tournament. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't play too bad at Lakewood. The Christmas tournament, we went to the finals. We didn't win it. Uh, we could have won it, I think, if we would have played a little harder. And every time we go into halftime, it's like a then we slow down and then we have to pick ourselves back up. Do you like to play Bailey? You guys seem to go head on head now for four years. Uh, he, he's tough. Uh, Bailey, he's like one of the best guards I've ever played against since uh, Danny and Ernie and, uh, and Sheldon Harvey. Um, Belly, I can't take nothing from him. He's, he's no, he's not like a real fast person, but he's smooth. He can go to the hoop. He can do, shoot the jump shot. And I can, I give him all the credit in the world. He's a very good basketball player. Okay, Otis, great game tonight. We're going back with Ken and Dwayne King. Okay, thank you, Nick. Congratulations to Otis. We got all kinds of players of the year sitting around here. Otis was our player of the year in high school football this year. I've got another one that won the award a couple of years ago here at Toms River South on our Channel 8. All-star football team. We got one sitting next to him. Our other player of the year this year, Chris Applegate. This is Dwayne King. Dwayne, nice looking shirt you got there. I like it. Yeah, well, this is the one we wore in the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. Yeah, congratulations on beating Michigan in the uh, Rose Bowl game this year on national TV. Thank you. Pac-10 champs. What's your status now, Dwayne? You're a freshman there. Did you uh, play on a team? Did they redshirt you? What's going on? Well, I got redshirted this year because uh, we had two guys who started last year came back. But uh, next year, you know, I hope to fight for that starting spot. You know, when I won't start, I'll come down on a special team. Let me get you to turn there where they can get a good look at you on that camera there. And that means you got four more years of eligibility coming up. So you'll be uh, playing a role in the future for Arizona State. Where do they project you? What position? Um, well, some talk went around camp about putting me at fullback, but I practiced all year at, at inside linebacker. You know, so I don't think that I'm going to be moved. So I think I have a future at inside linebacker you played ASU. you played inside linebacker tight end you played defensive end you played all over for uh, chip labarca mm, well mr labarca you know that was a pleasure to play for mr labarca now it's come more of a chore at asu are you trying to recruit otis to come out there and join you well we we've been breaking out back to get otis to come out there you know but um i don't know what the situation now is i know they want him to come out there real bad so I don't know where it stands as of yet. I know it's pretty warm out in Arizona right now. It's just as hot in this gym, isn't it? Oh, man. South Van always turns the gym up in here. <laughs> How about the Fiesta Bowl at Arizona State? Did you get a chance to watch the national championship, Penn State, Miami? No, Which actually, I was on the plane coming back from Pasadena on the second. So they were playing while I was flying, you know, into Tempe. But when we got there, you know, the traffic was backed up, and they were playing at our stadium. So I didn't get to see it, no. It was quite a game. Okay. We're going to watch for you in the future, and congratulations on your great career and uh, the scholarship at Arizona State, Wayne. Thank you. Okay, Dwayne King, former Toms River South Indian. I'm going to wrap it up, Art. I'll see you. I won't see you next week. Uh, we'll be down at Southern for the girls' basketball game. You can watch it on Channel 8 on January 15th and January 18th at 6 o'clock. That'll be Southern Regional taking on Toms River East, two of the best girls' basketball teams. Nick will be with me, and we'll bring you all the action, Art. So you're going to miss one game. You'll be back with us in a couple weeks. Absolutely, uh, and again, Towns River South just played a superb game this evening, 
and they definitely would be one of the favorites in Class A South now at this point. Coach Albano in the post-game interview, you know, he downplayed that just a little bit, but they looked awful strong to me. Once and don't count Southern out or Lakewood or Towns River North. Once again, the final score, Towns River South 75, Southern Regional 56. I want to thank our crew tonight. Our director was Lisa White on the elevated camera at half court tonight was Lisa Cuss and doing the honors right now down here on the uh, camera he's been roving around the court tonight is Jeff Simons and our chief engineer John Cappuccino thanks gang and for Nick Workman and Art Chris I'm Ken Turp I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you'll be with us for Tom's River East and Southern Girls next week good night <laughs>